Namaste and welcome to the video course on watershed management. Today we will start a new module, module on integrated watershed management. The topics covered in this module 3 will be introduction to integrated approach, integrated water resource management, conjective use of water resources, rainwater harvesting and roof catchment system. Today in lecture number 8, we will discuss the topic on integrated water resource management. In this lecture, the topics covered include introduction to integrated approach, integrated water resource management, integrated watershed management approach, a case study. Some of the important keywords in this lecture include integrated approach, integrated water resource management, integrated water resource management approach. So, the last few lectures we were discussing about the sustainability issues, the land sustainable land management issues, water resource management and uh, within the perspective of watershed management approach. So, we have seen that in one way or another way various resources or the management of various resources within a watershed we have to integrate. So, we have to go for integrated approach for the better management of the various resources within the watershed. So, within this perspective let us look uh, what is integrated approach, what are the issues and what are the challenges. So, within the perspective of water the various issues say in a river basin or in a watershed are. So, the resources are under pressure, resources like the water or land are under pressure. Then uh, many places population are under water stress, I mean sufficient water is not available even though water available in some locations the quality is not good enough. So, impact of pollution and uh, water governance crisis. So, some people in some areas some people get more water, some poor people are not getting sufficient water for various purposes. So, these are some of the important issues as far as water is concerned. So, with respect to these issues, what are the challenges when we discuss in terms of integrated watershed management. So, some of the challenges I have listed here were securing water for people. So, people should get sufficient water in good quantity and quality. Then securing water for food production that means for agricultural activities, then developing other job creating activities within the watershed, then protecting the vital ecosystems. So, we have seen that for the sustainable uh, management of an area, so we have to look into the ecosystem, so we have to protect the, the various aspects or various things related to the ecosystems. So, for that water is very essential. So, then dealing with the variability of water in time and space. So, this is another important issue as we have seen say water is available in some locations too much water is available, some locations very less water is available and then with respect to time also the water availability varies. Then uh, the next challenge is managing the risk. So, like various related uh, issues like uh, climatic changes. So, then how to manage the risk related to climate or say the, the when we discuss with respect to the pollution. So, how to manage the risk related to the pollution. So, then uh, creating popular awareness and understanding. So, one of the important aspects nowadays which we discuss in terms of watershed management is that people should aware what is going on and then uh, people should understand the various issues. So, that is very important. So, one important challenge is creating popular awareness and understanding and then forging the political will to act. So, even though we create plans, we generate plans, very good plans for various um, watershed management or water resource management uh, related issues. So, there will be political, there should be political will to act upon it. So, for that uh, say that is a, uh, we have to make the system in such a way that the, there is a political will to do the things. So, we have to uh, 
uh, do the things in such a way that there is for forging the political will to act. Then ensuring collaboration across sectors and boundaries. So, uh, we have to see that uh, the water is say uh, as far as water is concerned with respect to rain even though we classify in terms of watershed or particular river basin. So, many times we have to deal with uh, uh, the uh, say river passing through different areas or we have to deal with the different sectors like agriculture sectors, environmental sectors or forestry sectors. So, like that. So, uh, one of the major challenge as far as integrated approach is concerned, we have to collaborate across sectors and boundaries so that uh, we will have better uh, management plans. So, uh, within this perspective of issues and challenges, uh, let us discuss the integrated approach. So, integrated approach can be the integration of various things with respect to the natural system or uh, integration uh, with respect to the various uh, issues related to the human system. So, these uh, things uh, I have listed here in this slide. So, here you can see related to the natural system uh, there is critical importance for resource availability and quality. So, that way when we call the integrated approach in terms of natural system includes integration of fresh water and coastal zone management. So, you can see that uh, the rivers uh, will be joining the sea. Uh, so, then uh, uh, what is happening the, the, uh, the coastal zone that it will be affecting the fresh water availability as well as the various related issues. So, we have to see the integration of fresh water and coastal zone management, then integration of land and water management. So, that is another important issue which we have already discussed earlier. So, in terms of sustainable land management or in terms of sustainable water management, we have to see the integration of land and water management. Then integration of surface and ground water management. So, the water availability can be surface water or ground water. So, we have to see that both are used in an integrated way so that uh, uh, better uh, utilization, efficient utilization will be achieved. Then integration of quantity and quality in water resource management. So, uh, say as far as natural system is concerned, uh, so it is not only the quantity of water available, but we have to see that the available uh, quantity of water has good quality. So, that way we have to integrate, we have to integrate within the quantity and quality of the uh, water resource system uh, available. Then integration of upstream and downstream water related interests. So, we have already seen that um, when we discuss especially the uh, watershed based approach. So, we, what is happening the, the at the upstream uh, areas that will affect the downstream people also. So, we have to see that uh, there is integration of especially water related issues uh, uh, with respect to the upstream uh, lands and the downstream lands or downstream uh, areas. So, we have to see uh, within the perspective of natural system. So, like this uh, in an integrated approach uh, the, there should be uh, integration of uh, various sectors like um, fresh water, coastal zone, land and water, then surface and ground water and uh, quantity and quality upstream and downstream. So, that is as far as the integrated approach of natural system. So, now let us see the human system. So, the human system determines uh, resource use, uh, waste production and pollution and development uh, priorities etcetera. So, uh, human beings or the people within the watershed or people within the river basin um, do a lot of activities uh, within the system. So, that should be uh, streamlined in such a way that uh, or integrated in such a way that uh, uh, say uh, we can achieve uh, the integrated uh, water uh, resources uh, development and management in a better way. So, as far as human system is concerned, uh, we have to uh, mainstream uh, the water resources available uh, within the uh, area which we consider. Then macroeconomic effects of water developments. So, we have to see that uh, the, the various uh, developmental issues within the, wa the watershed or within the area uh, within the perspective of uh, the, uh, the not only the environmental, but economical aspects also. 
that influencing economic uh, sector decisions. So, we have to see that uh, if they say uh, if we invest say particular amount of um, uh, money in the in a, in a watershed then uh, say what kind of activities in an effective way we can do so that we can uh, have optimal um, say uh, plans so that uh, we can achieve uh, better uh, sustainable development. Then integration of all stakeholders in planning and decision. So, this is uh, very important in terms of integrated water resource management. So, uh, we have already seen uh, the, um, the uh, uh, say people should get involved or the stakeholders should uh, get involved from the beginning. Uh, 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 so, in development of the plans and then also implementations and maintenance. So, that is the integration of all stakeholders. Uh, within the area. Then integrating water and waste water management. So, as we already discussed it is not only the quantity of water, the quality is also very important. So, that way uh, we have to see that um, the various sectors uh, say not only the water resource, but the waste water management also should be integrated in such a way that say the uh, water uh, coming to a, a river base to a river or an aquifer system uh, recharging an aquifer system that should be good quality of water and that uh, will sustain the uh, system. So, that way uh, the integrated approach we can discuss in terms of natural system or the uh, human system. So, now uh, say out of these two uh, issues uh, say of nat natural system and um, human system say let us uh, discuss two important uh, uh, issues uh, say first one is related to natural system. Uh, so, that is integration of uh, land and water management. So, uh, the land use developments and vegetation cover like uh, crop selection or um, uh, afforestation etcetera influence the physical distribution and quality of water. So, that is very important. So, considering uh, say overall planning and management, uh, we have to see that say uh, the uh, land and water uh, both, both are resources we integrate both in such a way that uh, uh, optimal or sustainable developments uh, takes place. Then promotion of catchments and river basin management uh, like uh, logical planning uh, say as a watershed for integrated water resource management uh, plans. So, that is uh, very important in terms of um, promotion of the catchments uh, say either in, in the scale of a watershed or a river basin. So, then as far as uh, water utilization is concerned we can classify into green water and blue, blue water. Green water is the water directly used for biomass production and uh, this in this process the water is lost as evapotranspiration. So, um, uh, and then blue water means uh, water flowing in rivers and aquifers. So, mostly say most of the time when we discuss about the, uh, the water resource management uh, say we will be discussing the water management uh, with a focus on blue water only. But, um, Green water is um, they, they, um, uh, say lot of water about more than 50 percent of the water is um, uh, gone as uh, green water or uh, water used for biomass production and uh, lost in evapotranspiration. So, management of the green water having significant potential for water savings also uh, we have to see that. So, when we discuss about the integration uh, or integration of land and water management we have to see not only the blue water, but uh, the green water and also the, the land. So, then uh, the next one is uh, say one issue which we want to discuss in terms of uh, human system integration. So, here um, uh, the one of the most important issue is the stakeholders and uh, people participation. So, here uh, we will briefly discuss about the integration of all stakeholders uh, in the planning and uh, uh, decision process. So, here the key element in obtaining balanced and sustainable utilization of resources any resource within a watershed or in, a, in an area is integration of the stakeholders. So, uh, depending upon their needs, uh, depending upon the, the aspiration of the people, we have to uh, see that the, the, uh, the particular projects are implemented or particular uh, management uh, plans are made. So, generally stakeholders represent con conflicting interests and their objectives concerning water resource management may substantially 
differ. So, if you consider a watershed, uh, people will have uh, different people will have different interests. So, the rich people may have uh, different interests, interest, poor people may have different interests. So, rich farmers want to um, uh, say grow cash crops like uh, sugar cane and poor uh, farmers may wish to um, uh, say go for um, uh, rice cultivation. So, like that there will be uh, differing views or different uh, say the uh, conflicting interest will be there. So, uh, in uh, integrated water resource management, we should uh, develop operational tools for this conflict management and resolution. So, we have to uh, say uh, call all these stakeholders whether rich or poor and then uh, we should have a mechanism for conflict management and then we have to uh, resolve the issues. So, then um, also it is essential to identify the water resource management functions uh, based on uh, lowest level of uh, implementation. So, we have to see that uh, from uh, small scale farmers uh, to the, the particular uh, either panjayat level or to all the, the uh, implementation is concerned, we have to see that all the people are part of uh, the implementation process. And uh, in that process, the relevant stakeholders should be identified and mobilized. So, in any integrated uh, system, so we have to see that um, uh, say starting from the, the grassroots level people, uh, say people should get involved uh, in, in uh, developmental plans and also implementation and the uh, maintenance. So, now within this uh, perspective, uh, so when we discuss about the integrated water resource um, management. Uh, say uh, three major issues we have to uh, deal. So, uh, these issues are uh, say efficiency of the system, then uh, social equity and uh, sustainability of the uh, of the watershed uh, ma management or water resource plan. So, uh, these issues uh, we will discuss uh, briefly in this slides. So, as far as efficiency is concerned, efficiency in water use is core principle of integrated water resource management. Uh, so, water must be used with the maximum possible efficiency. So, as we discussed earlier, say for example, in agriculture sector, so much water is uh, wasted. Say, say for example, India is concerned um, more than 80 percent of the water is used uh, for agriculture purposes. So, how we can uh, say um, deal with this uh, demand and supply management so that we can achieve efficiency. And then also we have to see economic efficiency. So, as we discussed uh, uh, water resource it has to be considered as a good with an economical value so that uh, we can achieve uh, economic efficiency. And then uh, another important uh, issue in integrated water resource management is social equity. So, social equity means all people must have a access to water of adequate quantity and quality. So, this is a very important issue. So, uh, say whether uh, within a watershed whether people may be poor or rich, but uh, it uh, uh, does not matter. So, uh, as far as water is concerned, uh, say uh, adequate quantity and quality of water should be available. Uh, all for all people uh, say for all say for all their needs say including the drinking or uh, the sanitation purpose or the agriculture purpose or any other needs. So, uh, as far as social equity is concerned participation in water management by all stakeholders uh, is very important in, in development plans and implementation. So, uh, that is the best way to ensure equity uh, as far as water management is concerned. Then uh, as we discussed earlier, the sustainability issues are very important. So, to achieve ecological sustainability, uh, we have to see that um, uh, water is allocated or water is used in an appropriate uh, way. So, the current water use should be managed in such a way that uh, it does not, it does not affect uh, the future generation. So, uh, say for example, if you are overdrawing water from an aquifer system and then uh, if we are not recharging sufficient water to the aquifer system, there will be uh, the aquifer um, uh, say the pump, uh, the pumping wells will get dry. So, there will be uh, problem. So, like that uh, say when we deal with any system within the perspective of integrated water resource management and we get to see that uh, a sustainability of the of the system is maintained so finally uh, so integrated water resource management means integration of in all these issues like efficiency the system should be efficient then equity should be there and sustainability should be there for the considered system so now within this perspective let us now finally define 
the integrated water resource management. So, uh, now last uh, two decades lo lot of discussions um, are going on at various um, international meetings and like uh, uh, global water partnership, uh, UNESCO meeting, United Nations meeting or um, even uh, international monetary fund meeting etcetera. So, they, everywhere as far as water sector is concerned uh, people are talking uh, term called integrated water resource uh, management or integrated water resource development and management. So, as per um, uh, the definition given, given by global uh, water partnership GWP, uh, the integrated water resource management means it is a process uh, which promotes coordinated development and management of water, lands and related resources to maximize resultant uh, economic and social welfare in an equitable manner without compromising the sustainability of vital ecosystems. So, this is the definition of IWRM or integrated water resource management as per the global water, uh, water partnership uh, which is given in their website. So, that way uh, when we talk about IWRM it involves uh, applying the knowledge from various disciplines as well as insights from diverse stakeholders to devise and implement efficient, equitable and sustainable solutions to water and development problems. So, this is the explanation. So, as we discussed in the last few slides, uh, there should be uh, the, the as far as water use is concerned, it, the, it should be efficient, then uh, social equity should be there and then sustainability should be uh, there. So, that way this uh, integrated water resource uh, management or integrated water resource development and management is a comprehensive participatory planning and implementation tool for managing and developing sustainable water resource. So, that way uh, we can see that uh, say here uh, a comprehensive and participatory planning and implementation tool. So, that way we can say IWRM. So, uh, within that perspective, so all these processes are concerned or the process should be open and flexible and uh, uh, of course, uh, the IWRM involve uh, stakeholders and decision makers in, in, the, in the all the uh, development plans. So, it can be either a watershed basis or river basins uh, basis or a regional basis or state wise or country wise. So, whichever uh, we term we call. So, IWRM or integrated water resource management. So, uh, there should be uh, uh, equity should be there, then um, the uh, it should be efficiency should be there and then the system should be sustainable. So, this this is the fundamental definition as far as IWRM or integrated water resource management as given by uh, global uh, water partnership. So, that way uh, now uh, let us look into what are the important principles as far as IWRM or integrated water resource management is concerned. So, as given by uh, GWP or global water, water partnership uh, say in the Dublin statements, uh, the important principles are uh, the fresh water is a finite and vulnerable resource uh, which is essential to sustain life and development. So, this is the first principle. Uh, as given in Dublin statements. Then uh, second principle is water development and management should be based on a participatory approach. So, the users, uh, uh, the planners and policy makers uh, at all levels should, in, uh, should be consulted and should include uh, in all the uh, developmental plans, implementations and maintenance. So, this is the uh, second uh, principle uh, as, as per GWP. And then uh, uh, so third principle uh, f f from the Dublin statement is uh, women play a central part as far as the, the wa integrated water resource management is concerned. So, especially you can see that um, in uh, developing countries or un um, uh, underdeveloped countries you can see that um, women uh, say they have to get water for uh, say for their for the daily life of the family uh, for the cooking and all other purpose. So, uh, women should always be a should have central role as far as in any of the development plans as far as integrated water resource management is concerned. And then uh, the fourth principle is the system should be, uh, so that way uh, water we have to say put it in such a way that it is a public good with 
socio economic value. So, this is the one of the most important aspect of this um, Dublin statements. So, water resource uh, it we, we water we have to see it as a good, but it is a we it, it has a socio economic value. So, it not only economic value, but socio economic is most important since say we cannot put uh, say the the uh, say as far as what rate is concerned or when we supply water we cannot increase the rate beyond certain level since it is also a socio socio economic uh, good so that uh, people need uh, for the for their uh, for, for the sustain sustaining the life so uh, or the sustaining the eco ecological system so that way uh, water is uh, public uh, uh, good with a socio economic value. So, in all this uh, the basic is uh, the water should be the uh, water as a resource should be equitable and efficient management should be done in all levels uh, and then the use should be sustainable. So, that is so uh, these are the uh, important principle four principles um, as far as Dublin statement is concerned, but the final one say so in all these four principle say the management is concerned it should be equitable uh, efficient and uh, sustainable system. So, that way uh, if we uh, as per global water partnership. So, uh, IWRM or integrated water resource management. So, if we can uh, say achieve uh, say all these uh, important um, uh, principles as far as uh, the water management is concerned. So, that way uh, say uh, we can feed the world that means uh, say we can produce sufficient uh, uh, biomass for the uh, people and uh, for the uh, ecosystem and then uh, so you can see that um, uh, the say now uh, uh, say large scale urban urbanization is going on uh, say in all developing countries so that way lot of stress is there as far as water is concerned so that also we have to deal and then uh, the water resource system is get depleted and um, so we have to uh, work together across all sectors uh, so that we can have social change and all this development plans water is the key uh, as far as the development is concerned. So, when we are looking for all the development plans as far as a country is concerned or as far as state is concerned or even local government is concerned, water is the key aspect as far as the developmental issues. So, uh, say we have to see the development of this water resource system in an integrated way uh, by considering all these uh, principles uh, discussed here. So, now uh, let us see what are the important concepts as far as indirect water resource management is concerned. So, we have seen that um, water is concerned uh, uh, say um, multiple users are there, multiple uses are there. So, we have to go for holistic management. Uh, so, it is not only uh, say uh, the management of a one sector, but um, say we have to integrate various sectors so that um, holistic uh, management uh, is there. And then uh, we have to see the various perspective as far as water use is concerned like multiple perspective and participatory approach and women involvement. So, all these things we have to see as far as integrated water resource management concepts are concerned. And then uh, let us see what are the important components as far as IWRM is concerned. So, important components are listed here like water allocation to uh, major uses and uh, uses. So, how we allocate uh, for each sector and then how efficiently we can do this. Then uh, river basin planning, uh, so as far as river basin is concerned what are the important priorities, so that way we have to see. Then stakeholders participation, so as we discussed uh, uh, in earlier lectures it is very important in not only in uh, planning stage decisions ma making and implementation. Then um, uh, not only the quality of quantity of water, but quality is very important. So, pollution control like managing pollution using uh, say for example, polluters uh, pay principles and appropriate incentives. So, that we can uh, minimize the environmental and social impacts as far as pollution is concerned. Then um, monitoring, uh, so we have to monitor uh, the various system, uh, so that uh, we can implement effective monitoring system for the considered um, uh, the watershed or river basin scale system. Then economic and financial management, uh, so um, uh, 
so as we have seen water is a socio-economic good. So, when we invest money uh, for a particular project, we have to see that there is uh, the, the benefits are sustainable. So, that is issue also we have to see. And then finally, uh, in as far as uh, IWR component is concerned, information management. So, the people should know what is going on or what kind of project are implemented and what will be its benefits. So, information management uh, is also uh, very important. So, now uh, say within this perspective uh, as far as integrated water resource management is concerned, uh, the three basic pillars of IWRM include uh, first one is enabling environment. So, there the uh, we have to see the suitable policies uh, then uh, various strategies and uh, legislation for the sustainable integrated water resource management. So, that is the first pillar and second one is institutional framework. So, we should uh, make uh, sufficient uh, appropriate institutional framework, uh, so that um, the policies can be practiced and uh, we can develop appropriate strategies and uh, legislation. And third important pillar is setting the management instruments for the implementation. So, it is not only once the plan is made, we have to implement appropriately and then uh, we have to uh, maintain it appropriately. So, the third pillar is the management instrument for implementation. So, like this, so if you consider the various aspects of uh, integrated water resource management, uh, as far as uh, IWM planning is concerned, we can uh, put it in a cycle. So, we have to consider a particular system which we are considering whether it is watershed system or river basin system. So, then uh, we have to see what are the issues as far as the system is concerned. So, then uh, we have to analyze the gaps as far as the various uh, say resource management is concerned. And then uh, we have to build uh, commitments uh, to actions so that um, uh, we can um, uh, say, uh, say remove these gaps and for better management plans. And then we have to go for implement uh, the framework uh, within the watershed or within the area which we consider. And then we have to continuously monitor and evaluate the progress. So, it is not only simply uh, implementing the, the plan. Uh, but we have to continuously monitor and then see uh, whether uh, whatever we uh, put as our objectives, whether we are able to meet those objectives and uh, we should uh, go for appropriate evaluation system. And then uh, we have to establish status and goals, we again we may have to come back. So, this is a cycle. So, uh, we have to further uh, based upon the, the experience, based upon the uh, the earlier studies we have to establish again status and goals and uh, uh, finally, we have to build commitments to reform process. So, uh, earlier implemented plans may not be correct, there may be mistakes. So, we have to change uh, with respect to the plans which were or which say which were made earlier and then uh, uh, we have to reform the process uh, so that uh, we will have a better integrated water resource management plans. So, this is uh, this will continue again back to the uh, we may have to go back to the system and then analyze uh, and then continue uh, various aspects as far as the integrated water resource management uh, plans are uh, concerned. So, this is this way we can see that uh, the, this is a cycle IWRM planning is a cycle. So, which uh, we have to continuously keep on uh, going from one uh, aspect to uh, another aspect. Uh, so, now uh, within this perspective let us see how we can implement uh, integrated water resource management plans. So, what are the procedures? So, the various um, uh, say steps as far as the uh, implementation is concerned or IWRM is concerned are listed here. So, first one is managing water at the basin or uh, watershed uh, scale. Uh, so, whatever is available within that basin or without within that watershed uh, we have to manage there itself. Uh, so, we have to integrate land and water uh, upstream and downstream, uh, ground water and surface water uh, and the coastal resources. So, like that we have to uh, manage uh, whether a, a watershed scale or basin scale. 
then the second uh, step is we have to optimize the supply. Uh, uh, so, uh, we have to conduct assessment of surface and ground water available, uh, then uh, we have to analyze the water balance, then uh, uh, we have to see that um, uh, how we can conserve the water and then uh, whether we can go for water recycling or water reuse. So, that issue we have to see. So, that is uh, the next step optimizing the supply. And then um, the next uh, step is managing the demand. So, we can see that um, say, um, uh, various sectors need the, uh, are having different demands. So, uh, we have to optimize this demand so that um, uh, we will be having an efficient water uh, utilization. So, we have to also in this especially in agriculture sector we have to go for water efficient technologies um, also in industries also we have to go for water efficient uh, technologies. Then uh, next step is providing equitable access. So, within the perspective of integrated water resource management, we have already seen that there should be social equity should be there. So, we have to see effective water uses uh, association are there say on a watershed scale or a river basin scale. So, that um, uh, we can have equitable access as far as water resource is concerned. And then uh, we have to establish a policy as far as the water management is concerned. So, um, for example, implementation uh, of the polluter uh, pays principles say for the particular river is concerned if the if some companies or some industries are polluting um, the water then they have to pay for the cleaning up operation. Then uh, water quality norms and standards. So, we have to establish policy. So, only this much uh, total dissolved solid or BOD, COD that, that the, the, for that particular uh, location of the river uh, or lake uh, uh, that is only allowed. So, that way we have to establish the policy. Uh, then uh, the last one is inter sectoral approach. So, as far as um, uh, IWRM procedure is concerned, so we have to see that uh, various sectors are integrated uh, in such a way that um, starting from the development plans uh, to decision making and implementation and management of the system. So, uh, all the uh, sectors including stakeholders, government and then um, the, the, um, the NGOs or other all the se sectorial people are involved uh, in an appropriate way. So, that way th these are the important steps as far as the IWRM uh, procedure is concerned. So, finally, uh, so when we when we are looking to implementation of integrated water resource management, what are the basis? So, some of the important points are listed here. So, first one is the basic principle which we already discussed earlier. So, in the as far as basic principle is concerned, we consider water as social and economic goods. Uh, so, we have to go for a holistic perspective as far as water management is concerned and then uh, we have to uh, get involved with all the stakeholders. So, these are the basic principles and then balancing uh, we have to balance the economic efficiency, environmental sustainability and social equity as far as uh, water is concerned uh, within the perspective of IWRM. Then we have to align the interests and activities that are traditionally seen as unrelated or not well co coordinated. So, we have to see that um, the all the sectors or the all the people all the stakeholders are uh, actively participating and then all our all needs are um, uh, say either in horizontal or vertical direction uh, all the uh, traditional systems are taken care all the people needs are taken care. And then uh, it is not just water, but uh, we are integrating uh, water in overall sustainable development processes. So, it is not only water as we discuss, it is water, land, all resources, all the people and the ecosystem. So, that way uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, IWRM incorporates integration um, of the various sectors so that uh, there will be equity will be there, efficiency will be there and finally, we achieve sustainability through all these means. So, that is the uh, fundamental uh, principle or the basis of uh, integrated uh, water resource management. So, now say we have seen the basis, the principles, concepts of uh, integrated water resource management. So, now the next question is how to implement as far as uh, this integrated water resource management is concerned either on a watershed scale or on a river basin scale, how to implement these uh, principles. So, uh, the implementation is concerned uh, the various issues are listed here in this slides. 
So, the enabling environment like, like national, provision, provincial, local. So, uh, so to the implementation is concerned it can be by national government or the provincial government or local panjayat. So, uh, it can be from uh, top to bottom uh, or uh, say from uh, say various companies to communities. So, like that. So, the enabling environments it can be uh, so, these various uh, say sectors either national government or provincial government or local government. Then the role of governments, uh, so we have to see uh, government as an enabler, government as controller, government as regulator and uh, also uh, government as service provider. So, that um, uh, say uh, the government can uh, improve the public sector and then uh, government can uh, the various sectors of the government as well as private sectors can come together. Uh, so, that um, uh, the, the, the principles or the, the integrated water resource management uh, system can be implemented for the particular uh, area. Then uh, water legislation. So, the, the, there should be framework either political um, uh, say there should be political will to enforce uh, and then uh, the various uh, requirements as far as the system is concerned. And then cross sectoral like uh, upstream downstream dialogue allocation coordination and implementation. Uh, then uh, we have to see the uh, finance and economics. So, financing structures and investment allocations for water resource infrastructure. And then uh, public uh, investments, uh, then private sector, uh, public private uh, partnership, uh, then cost of water, uh, so etcetera. Then uh, cooperation within the international river basins. So, in uh, uh, many areas, one river will be passing from one country to another country. So, there should be cooperation between the countries uh, uh, so that um, the available water resource can be utilized in an efficient way in the within the perspective of IWRM. Then in the institutional roles, so we have to uh, as far as institutional roles are concerned, the capacity building should be done between the various sectors. Then uh, we have to develop the various instruments, so called management instruments such a way that we can achieve the integrated water resource management. Then water resource uh, assessment, so we have to see, we have to assess the available water resource uh, so that we can deal with the availability and the demand. Then communication and information systems, so that all the stakeholders know what is going on within the system. Then water allocation and conflict resolution as we discussed uh, and there will be uh, conflicts will be there between the people between various sectors. So, we have to see uh, an appropriate uh, plan uh, for allocation and conflict uh, resolution. And then finally, the regulatory and uh, economic instruments. Uh, so, the uh, from the government sector or uh, the regulatory sector, there should be direct control and uh, then also of course, there should be safe regulation as far as uh, say like in the water users group uh, uh, make their own plans as far as water management is concerned. So, this way uh, we can implement uh, the integrated water resource management plans. So, now uh, finally, uh, here say as far as integrated water resource management is concerned say it can be various uh, things can be there like uh, maximum development of water resource from a basin based on the quantitative information for planned beneficial use. Then involves it can involve uh, awareness of present status of development, socio-economic consideration and policy formulation. So, there can be various technical issues like flood routing, reservoir regulations, uh, river forecasting, then conjective use of uh, various water resources. So, we will be discussing about conjective use of water resources in the next lecture. Uh, then concentration of population irrespective of natural resources situation and then migration to cities. So, like this uh, say when we discuss uh, the IWRM, uh, so it may involve and the conjective use deferred and maximum perennial yield computation of gross additional reserve, reserve available in the basin, the river basin and it may also involve an integration of the scientific inputs into the uh, local management on a uh, watershed basis or, or, or on a uh, uh, river basin uh, scale. So, uh, finally, now what we have discussed is integrated water resource management. So, uh, let us look as far as uh, the, the issues related to development and management. So, uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, 
uh, water is a basic natural resource uh, which nurtures life. So, uh, water uh, is basically used for three sectors like um, food production say for example, for irrigation then uh, people use like drinking, sanitation, industrial purpose then natural uh, uses ecological purpose. So, as we discussed earlier due to the variability with respect to space and time. So, we have to develop the available resource and then uh, we have to uh, see that say for example, surface water and ground water uh, uh, developed in an integrated way. So, whenever we go for developments, so we have to manage the system. So, uh, the development and management go hand in hand. So, uh, that way uh, within the perspective of integrated water resource management principles which we discussed earlier, we have to uh, say integrate the the integrated uh, water resource system. So, that way we can call uh, the term called integrated water resource development and management uh, uh, compared to simply IWRM. So, it is development and management so that uh, the water is uh, the availability is there and uh, then sustain sustainability uh, is there as far as the uh, water sector is concerned. So, that way uh, as we discussed it can be integration IWRDM integrated water resource development and management is concerned. It can be integration of uh, say river basin resources like uh, surface water and ground water. It can be integration of demands like uh, uh, say for uh, demands for agriculture purpose or non agriculture purposes. So, that way consumptive demands and non consumptive demands and then uh, how much water is available as far as supply is concerned. So, this this IWRDM can be in terms of uh, the demand and supply management and then also uh, we can talk IWRDM in terms of um, uh, the facilities like uh, integration of um, micro projects to mega projects. So, that way also we can discuss and then as we discussed in the earlier slide uh, slides. So, it can be also integration of uh, human system and ecosystems and then uh, also uh, we can integrate the science and technology and uh, engineering with uh, the various issues related to uh, IWRM uh, like social, economic and uh, uh, their synergic needs. So, IWRDM can be in terms of integration of all these things either uh, some of these things or all the things depending upon the particular problem uh, which we uh, consider. So, now, uh, so far we discussed uh, about integrated water resource management and the integrated water resource development and management. So, now let us come back to uh, the say this, uh, this aspect in terms of watershed. So, that way now we will discuss briefly about uh, the integrated watershed management approach. So, uh, when we discuss in terms of watershed, uh, the uh, uh, integrated watershed management approach, the main objectives uh, are listed here. So, this include say uh, this is very similar to what we discussed earlier as far as IWRM is concerned also, but now we are talking in terms of watershed scale. So, uh, as far as watershed scale, the objectives are concerned water has multiple uses and must be managed in an integrated way that means within the watershed then water should be managed at lowest appropriate level. So, that means from the uh, from say the people uh, who are using the water uh, on the watershed scale and water allocation should take account of the interest of all who are affected. So, that way all the stakeholders uh, should be consulted. Then water should be recognized and treated as an economic good. So, the objectives are almost same as IWRM. Uh, then uh, say as far as watershed integrated watershed management is concerned the various uh, strategies uh, are listed here. So, it can be a long term sustainable future for basin, uh, basin or watershed stakeholders. So, and whenever we make plans integrated watershed management approach we have to see that we have to plan for long term. Then equitable access to water resource for water uses. So, this is also very similar to IWRM as per uh, global water partnership uh, definition. Then application of principles of demand management for efficient utilization. So, we have to see the supply and demand management. Then prevention of further environmental degradation say that it can be a short term goal and then uh, restoration of degraded resources. So, this issue also we have discussed. So, in terms of watershed 
uh, we have to see short time goal may be uh, to prevent further degradation and long time goal may be we have to restore the degraded uh, the watershed, watershed system. So, that way uh, these are the objectives and strategies as far as integrated watershed management approach is concerned. So, that way finally, uh, we can define the integrated watershed uh, management approach uh, as the process of planning and implementing uh, water and natural resources. Uh, so, that uh, the emphasis on integrating the biophysical, uh, socio economic and uh, institutional aspects as far as the considered watershed is concerned. So, now you can see that um, say if you critically analyze the watershed development pro uh, programs or projects uh, say in India. Say for example, in 1960s and 70s the main emphasis on was on uh, water conservation. Uh, so, the projects the important projects were implemented by uh, the central and state governments. Uh, so, the mainly it was for water conservation. So, the people were not consulted in these issues. So, public participation was uh, very minimal. So, in a, so the, the projects were not many of the projects were not successful. Then uh, in 80s the thrust was socio-economic with um, water conservation. So, the some of the social issues, economic issues also were considered and in a, again the project many of the projects were not successful. Then in 90s uh, the thrust change to socio-economic uh, and water conservation and also to certain extent the people uh, needs people participation were considered. So, you can see that um, the project success in many of the projects implemented uh, uh, were successful during that time. And finally, now uh, within the perspective of integrated water resource management. Uh, the government various state government and central government uh, identified the needs uh, of the people then how the st stakeholders uh, involvement and public participation in planning and design and implementation stage were uh, now done in uh, uh, say the, 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 the projects implemented in the last two decades. So, that way we can see that many of these projects uh, are successful. So, that way like the social issues like involvement of women and minority were considered community led water uses groups have been formed in many of the projects area. Uh, so, that way now most of the cases uh, we can see that the projects have become successful. So, within the perspective of integrated watershed management approach uh, say as far as science and technology is concerned uh, we can see that for engineering and management tools which can help uh, in effective and sustainable development include appropriate technologies, uh, decentralized development uh, system, then catchment uh, based water resource planning, then management information system. So, for the considered system we can develop appropriate technologies and then uh, we can go for decentralization of the system and then uh, catchment based or watershed based uh, planning is implemented and we can develop appropriate management information system for the uh, uh, by, by considering various issues. So, in the past the efforts were more on soil conservation and uh, now uh, by say earlier uh, we used to neglect the welfare of the land uses, but now uh, we look into the sustainable watershed management. Uh, we, we are integrating the socio economic development uh, together with the soil and water conservation. So, that way if you critically analyze you now the reason uh, recently many of the projects which we, uh, which uh, taken care of the socio economic aspects and then uh, the various other technical issues we can see that most of the projects are uh, successful. So, that way uh, say in an integrated watershed uh, management say the methodology and the, uh, which is to be adopted the important measures used are listed here uh, like uh, soil and water conservation, water harvesting for supplementary irrigation, community participation, water regulation, consideration of the scale say like uh, on a watershed scale as yes, minor watershed or major watershed depending upon the requirement and then uh, the uh, joint forest management. So, like that various issues uh, we can integrate together, so that we can develop an appropriate methodology. Uh, as far as integrated watershed management approach is uh, concerned. So, that way uh, we can develop an integrated watershed management model. So, this model we have discussed earlier also. So, the there will be human uh, system will be interacting with the natural system and then uh, uh, say the all the stakeholders will be coming to picture. So, then uh, we will be having appropriate uh, capacity building. 
So, then uh, we go for uh, various sectors like water harvesting, then soil conservation, then afforestation, uh, then uh, community support uh, services. Uh, so, like that finally, the aim will be to uh, achieve uh, better quality of life or improved uh, quality of life and poverty elevation as far as the, the watershed is concerned. So, now uh, let us see the various advanced technologies. Uh, how they, these technologies can help as far as the uh, integrated water resource management approach is concerned. So, say for example, if you consider remote sensing that can be used for uh, to see the, the in a to get a holistic uh, um, uh, picture of what is going on uh, within a watershed and then land use, land cover, the crop management uh, issues, the availability of surface water etcetera. So, that we can get through the remote sensing and then uh, we can uh, use the, the, the topographic map within uh, geographic information system. So, that we can develop uh, better maps and then uh, we can integrate within the socio-economic aspects as far as the watershed is concerned. And finally, by considering all these issues, we can develop appropriate watershed management system or model. So, from that uh, say once it is implemented, the results may be reliable water security, enhanced agricultural yield improved living standard, sustainable land use and uh, community consensus. So, that way uh, as far as the, uh, the integrated watershed management approach is concerned, say if, when we are looking for watershed management um, uh, plan. So, uh, as we discussed earlier, we can start with um, natural resource mapping for the area, then social mapping, then uh, we can go for uh, users group, village volunteers, then we can go for participatory appraisal and then we can prioritize the options, uh, then we can go for the uh, implementation. The integrated watershed management approach, uh, it is development of uh, new village level institutions, local capacity building and then uh, uh, we go for a holistic development plans. So, it can be say starting from with the uh, village, then uh, watershed development committees, then uh, water users group uh, like that various uh, users group can be formed. So, that we can go for a appropriate watershed development plans. So, now before closing today let us briefly go through one uh, case study of integrated water source management. Uh, so, this case study is integrated management of Chilka Lagoon. So, this um, uh, Chilka Lagoon is a uh, lagoon system located in uh, Orissa uh, in India. So, the, 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 this case study is the description to describe on the integrated lagoon basin management including the interventions in both the coastal process and river basin for restoration of a deteriorated lagoon with an ecosystem approach. So, this is the lagoon system in Orissa. So, you can see that the water is coming from Mahanadi river basin and some small rivers and then that is uh, finally, passing through this lagoon system to uh, the Bay of Bengal. Uh, so, here this is the hydrologically uh, the, the, the this was influenced by Mahanadi river delta, uh, some mi few minor rivers and the tidal outlets of the Bay of Bengal. So, construction of major hydraulic structures upstream in the Mahanadi altered uh, the flow pattern and uh, the, the, the uh, lagoon was uh, deteriorated uh, with the siltation, uh, weed growth and uh, decrease in salinity. Uh, so, uh, some of the uh, action plans taken uh, say uh, as far as this uh, Chilka lagoon is concerned, a holistic approach of integration of coastal processes and lagoon uh, basin in the management planning. So, hydrobiological monitoring of the lagoon has been done. Then uh, modern tools like GIS and remote sensing were used for monitoring and assessments. Uh, based on uh, various studies, uh, say the location opening of the inlet was moved closer to the central parts of the lagoon and an artificial mouth was generated and the dredging was done for the silted uh, channels and uh, areas. So, and then also uh, the environment impact assessment has been done before this project has been implemented and after the project has been implemented. So, some of the outcome of this project are listed here. There was significant improvement of the ecological health of the lagoon and uh, significant improvements of the salinity gradient uh, with less fluctuation. So, uh, that due to these reasons there is there was considerable improvement in fish generation and fish productivity. And then, uh, so, so the, this co say the, the outcome was substantial 
per capita income of the fishing community in this area. Then uh, this is a typical case of management framework of numerous uh, important coastal wetlands in the Asian region. So, the details you can see in this website and uh, say the impacts or the lessons learned from this um, uh, case study. Uh, this is a, uh, a successful implementation of uh, Chilka Development Authority related to non-bureaucratic organization setup supported by governments and other agencies. So, uh, Chilka Development Authority's concerned management philosophy include pragmatic outcome focused implementation by innovative leadership and it involves local uh, socio-economic activities backed by strong outreach programs including NGOs and community based organizations and then scientific interventions like hydrological interventions uh, were done and uh, then finally, the outcome is increased productivity level and uh, uh, say the one important aspect is the community participation and stewardship uh, made the success as far as uh, within the perspective of integrated water resource management as far as this Chilka Lagoon case study is concerned. So, some of the important case uh, references used in today's lecture are listed here. So, finally, say one tutorial question uh, say illustrate the integrated water resource management approach for rural watershed management plan with a case study. So, in this um, uh, GWP website you can see number of case studies. So, you can uh, look into these case studies and then identify the problems and discuss the lesson learned as far as the uh, case study which you are looking to. Then some self evaluation questions like uh, why integrated approach is needed in water and land management. Then discuss the importance of efficiency, social equity and sustainability relevant to IWRM. Then discuss important components of IWRM illustrate integrated uh, watershed management approach within the perspective of IWRM. Then a few assignment questions discuss integrated approach in terms of natural system and human system. Then what are the important principles of IWRM? Illustrate the IWRM procedure, discuss how to implement an IWRM uh, scheme, then discuss role of modern techniques in integrated watershed management approach. So, these are some of the assignment questions. So, finally, uh, one unsolved problem uh, for your watershed area prepare a master plan based on the integrated watershed management approach principles discussed earlier. So, you can identify the watershed problems, check the applicability of modern science uh, and techniques sci scientific techniques such as GIS and remote sensing. So, you can carry out detailed study survey uh, then uh, you can consider various options within the uh, integrated watershed management approach uh, and then you can develop a methodology for your uh, watershed. So, uh, with this uh, the first lecture on this module, module number 3 on uh, the integrated uh, water resource management uh, is over. So, we will see now in the, uh, the, the next lecture the conjunctive use as per surface and ground water is concerned we will discuss in the next lecture. Thank you.